Good morning, Year 9 students, and welcome to your options assembly for 2021. Usually we'd have this assembly in person and I'll be able to talk you through the process in the main hall. But unfortunately, that can't take place this year because of COVID-19. So this pre-recorded presentation will hopefully talk you through the process and give you all of the information that you need so that you can choose your options and have the best curriculum for you at Key Stage 4. It's really important to know that this whole process is going to be done during the lockdown period where school is only open to vulnerable students and those of key workers. So you're going to have to bear with us because this is the first and only time probably that we're going to run it virtually. The process is going to end by February half term. So we won't see many of you in person before you actually choose your options. It's really important that you contact the school if you have any worries, concerns or questions. You can talk to your form tutors or you can talk to Mr. Whedon and myself and we'll be able to deal with any questions that you might have or any worries that you might have about the process. So let's make a start then. Now that you're in year nine, you have an opportunity to start to shape the curriculum that you'll take for the remaining two years of your time at East Burgholt High School. In year 10 and 11, we have some subjects that are part of our core curriculum. That means that you have to take them. And we have a number of subjects that are option subjects, which means you can choose to take them. So this is an opportunity where you can begin to think about what you want to do in your education to help you for when you leave school. As part of this process, I've produced a curriculum information booklet. That booklet has been given to your form tutors, and I'm hopeful that they will put that onto your Google Classroom stream so that you'll be able to access the booklet there. The booklet is also on the website and your parents have been told where they can access that booklet. So please make sure that as well as watching this presentation carefully, you read the booklet. The booklet has an awful lot of information in it about individual subject areas that I won't be going through in the presentation. So you need to watch and listen to the presentation and you need to read the booklet carefully. So let's make a start then. For the vast majority of you, your curriculum will be made up of GCSEs. These are General Certificate of Secondary Education. And GCSEs are a numbered system. At the end of the process, you will be given a number between one and nine, and that's the grade that you've achieved. A nine is the highest grade that you can achieve at GCSE, and a one is the lowest grade. Beneath that is a U, ungraded. In terms of the numbers, a four is considered a standard pass, and a five is considered a good pass pass. In terms of what you need for post 16, so colleges and sick forms, it depends on the course that you want to take. Some courses will ask for a four, some will ask for a five. So it's really important that you start to do some research about the types of courses you might want to do at college and sick form so that you know what you need to achieve in your GCSEs. For English and maths, you need to get a grade four for college or sick form. If you don't get a grade four, then you'll have to resit English and maths when you arrive at college or sick form and you'll have to resit it until you pass or until you turn 18. So English and maths are important, but the rest of the curriculum is vital depending on what the entry requirements are and what you want to study. When you start Key Stage 4, you'll be given target grades, which will obviously be numbers. Those target grades are based on what you did in your SATs. And therefore, they are targets of what we expect you to achieve. Our hope and aspirations is that you'll achieve higher. So when you get your target grade, let's say it's a grade five, well, we're going to be pushing you to try and achieve a grade six. Always try and aim higher rather than just settling for what the target is. Now, for the vast majority of subjects that you'll study, and in fact, almost all GCSE subjects have terminal exams. A terminal exam means you will sit an examination in that subject area at the end of year 11. There's no small units like you're used to at Key Stage 3. It is just one long journey with an awful lot of content and an exam or several exams at the end of it. So the pressures are going to increase slightly, but the support from staff will also increase. So if there's any worries or concerns that you have, get in touch with us and we can talk to you about the GCSE requirements. There is not an awful lot of what we call non-exam assessments, which used to be called coursework or controlled assessments. So there's not an awful lot of subjects where you can do small amounts of work that are small percentages and then do an exam that isn't quite 100 percent. There are some and they are detailed in the curriculum information booklet. But please be prepared that every single examination there or sorry, every single subject, there will be an examination at the end of year 11 for you to sit. Alongside GCSEs, we also have what's called technical awards, or they're sometimes referred to as BTECs. 
their alternative to GCSEs, they're still relevant, they're still qualifications, and they still count for sick form or colleges. Um, the content, however, with them is different. BTECs are more about the practical application of the qualification. So it's about hands on experience in that qualification. It does not mean, however, that there won't be less content to learn, and it does not mean that you won't be examined in it, but they're an alternative to GCSEs. Technical awards differ because there's an awful lot of non-examined assessments that take place. Anywhere between 60 to 75% of the course is based on a non-examined assessment. So you can see by that statistic that 25%, 40% of the course is based on a terminal exam at the end of year 11. So these technical awards are going to be suitable for students who may not be able to cope with those terminal exams and the content that they have to remember for them. However, the technical awards are still challenging. You still have terminal exams in all of the technical awards. So it's still a, a really challenging qualification for students to take. You'll either get a past merit distinction or distinction star for a technical award. So it slightly differs from the nine to one, but they are equivalent to GCSEs. Okay, the core curriculum then. So some subjects all of year nine students will do. English language, English literature, mathematics, science, and core PE will be studied by all of you. In addition, all of you will be asked to take either geography or history. If you wish to take both geography and history, you can do that, but you must take either geography or history as part of your core curriculum. For science, it's either triple science, which is worth three GCSEs, or combined science, which is worth two GCSEs. Core PE is not a GCSE qualification, but it's an opportunity for you to stay fit and active and to build on um, team building exercise type activities regularly throughout year 10 and 11. So that's our core curriculum that all students will be following in year nine. Then we get to the options, the rest of your timetable and the list of options that you can choose from is on this slide. And in the curriculum information booklet, every single one of these option subjects has a specific dedicated page where subject leaders have outlined what the content of the course is like. Please read those um, pages carefully so that you know what to expect from each individual course. How many options you can choose from this list depends upon whether you take combined science, which is worth two GCSEs, or triple science, which is worth three GCSEs. The amount of options will differ as a consequence. A couple of things for me to point out. Art and Design Practice is a BTEC qualification that's being run by the DT department for the first time this year for year 10, but really the first time with you guys in September. Art and Design Practice is only suitable for students who receive the letter before Christmas. If you're unsure if you receive the letter before Christmas, speak to your parents, but it's only a very small number of students where Art and Design is going to be um, applicable for. It's a hands-on course, a practical application of art and design using the different materials that you would usually use for DT. If you'd like to take a DT subject, then take DT if you didn't receive a letter before Christmas. Similarly, we've got PE on here twice. We've got BTEC PE and GCSE PE. GCSE PE should be taken by students who are strong biologists. There's an awful lot of content in GCSE PE where students need to have quite a scientific mind and be able to work with the content that's being delivered and then be able to recall it in the exam. If you're looking for a more practical option, the BTEC PE is the one to take. It's not fully practical. There is still content to, um, to learn and then to be assessed on but you need to be a secure scientist if you're going to take GCSE PE. If you opt for GCSE PE and we don't think you're suitable, we will tell you we think you would be better off taking BTEC, but we'll have that communication and we'll get in touch with you if that is applicable to you. A couple of new courses on there, including hospitality and catering, and as I said, um, art and design practice. Um, we've got Creative Mind Media on there as well, which is an exciting course for students to take. Uh, as well as other courses uh, that have been running for a number of years. We'll also ask you to select two reserve choices. We cannot guarantee that you will get all of your first choices. I just want to repeat that. We can't guarantee all first choices. So we're asking students to make two reserve choices so that if we cannot put you in your first choice for whatever reason, we will use your reserve choice next. It's really important that you choose your reserve choices um, carefully because they might be part of your curriculum if we can't fit you into where you want to be. 
This is what the options chart looks like then. Core curriculum at the top, then you will select either geography or history. And then depending on the triple science or the combined science option, you'll have two open selections for triple science and three open selections for combined science. The subjects that are in red are technical awards, are BTECs. And this is in the options booklet as well. So you'll have all of that information for you in the options booklet as to whether it's a BTEC or it's a GCSE. So you'll be able to see all of the choices. As I said, art and design, PE, you need to think carefully about those two subject areas in terms of your ability and your aptitude in terms of school. Otherwise, the other subjects are free to choose from. What's going to happen this morning, because you'll be watching this hopefully on Thursday, the 7th of January, is that a letter is going to be sent home to your parents. This letter will make a series of recommendations of subjects that we think would be suitable for you to study at Key Stage 4. For example, some of you are going to get a letter that says we strongly recommend you take triple science. Some of you will get a letter that says we strongly recommend you take French or German or combined science. It's really important that you read these letters and that you understand we've made these recommendations based on subjects that we think or, or in fact we know you will be successful in. It's really important that if those recommendations aren't something that you are interested in, that yourself or your parents get in contact with the school. We started this process in September and we thought really carefully about the recommendations that we're making. What we've done is we've thought about you as a student, what your ability is like and the way in which you apply yourself in school. We've thought about the option choices themselves and how other students who have already gone through this process have fared in different subjects. And then we've made the recommendations based on all of that information. So we think the recommendations are really strong and will help you succeed. If you don't like the recommendations or if there are any concerns about them, make sure you get in touch with the school and we can talk to you about those recommendations that we've made. So that letter is going to be sent home this morning, Thursday, the 7th of January. Now, when you make your choices, there's a few things that you need to ask yourself. And I'm going to read from this slide so that I can just emphasize the questions. Think about what are the subjects you want to do? What is your progress like in these subjects and whether you're going to be successful in them or not? Will your choices lead you to what you want to do at sixth form college or indeed the job or career that you want to go into? What is available to you after sick form or college? And are these courses going to enable you to get to that? What career do you want? Where do your aspirations lead? What are your skills? This is not about making a really quick decision, but about making an informed decision by thinking about everything in terms of now and the future. We've also got a table at the bottom of this slide, which is the do's and don'ts that we put every single year to try and emphasize the same thing to students. Do talk about your options. Talk to parents and carers, talk to guardians, talk to tutors, talk to subject leaders, talk to Mr. Whedon or myself. The school has our own career advisor, which we can refer you to, but we're the ones that are in the position that can give you the information that you need. So talk. Do read the pages in the curriculum information booklet carefully. Please make sure you read that booklet because it's got far more information in it that I'm going to give to you this morning. Please make sure that you opt for a balanced choice of subjects. You want to make sure that you have doors open to you in the future rather than doors closed. So make sure you have a broad curriculum and a balance of different subjects that you can study when you go into year 10. Be realistic about the demands of the course. Some of the courses are extraordinarily challenging. They're all challenging in their own regard. Be realistic about what you can do and what area you can be successful in and how you can stay healthy in terms of your mental health by choosing the right option subjects. That's where our recommendations come in. Don't choose a subject because your friends are choosing them. Number one, it's your decision, it's your future, and those friends may not be friends forever. Number two, there's no guarantee you'll be in the same class as your friend. There's no guarantee you'll be sat next to your friend and you shouldn't be socializing while you're in lessons anyway. Don't choose it because your friends are choosing it. Don't choose the subject because of a particular teacher because there's no guarantee that teacher will teach you. The timetable is written after you have made your decision and the person who writes the timetable this year will be me and Mrs. Woolley. We have not assigned any staff to any groups. So when I say that I don't know what teacher you're going to get, I don't know what teacher you're going to get. So it's really important you don't choose it because of a particular teacher. It's also really important that you don't avoid a subject because of a teacher, because there's no guarantee you will get that teacher anyway. So it's really important that you take staff 
out of your decision. Please also don't be misled by the title of the subject and think I want to take that because it sounds good. Read the curriculum information booklet, make sure you do your own research and make sure that you choose a subject based on that research rather than just the title itself. This is the final slide. This is our timeline. This morning you've had the options assembly, which I'm now finishing. You will also get the options letters to your parents this morning. They had their information presentation yesterday. We have a parents evening on the 3rd of February, which is going to be online and virtual. And that will be an opportunity to discuss options with your um, subject teachers. And your final selection is gonna be via Google Forms by Friday the 19th of February. We will then confirm between Monday the 15th and Friday the 22nd of March, what your option subjects are. If there's a problem, we will communicate that problem to you and we will work with you to solve that problem. The Google form where you select your options won't be coming out for a couple of weeks. We want to give you time to think carefully about what you want to do and to have conversations about what you want to do and then we will release the Google form. I'll make sure all of you are made aware of when that form's available and when you need to select your options. Thank you very much for listening. If there are any questions, make sure you talk to your form tutors. And like I said, Mr. Whedon and myself will help you through the process as well. Thank you very much.